Hello everybody, this is Brad Johnson Small Engines. Had a customer want to service on his lawnmower and he said it felt sluggish. This is a Sears Craftsman DLT 3000. Uh, it doesn't really matter what the model is of the tractor, but the video that this is all about is, is uh, being able to show you how to replace an ignition coil. Alright, so it comes in sluggish. I'm going to lift the hood now and show you. I have this already set up to show you for video purposes, but down here is an, an ignition tester and this has a uh, this is the ignition spark plug wire right here basically it's one end goes into the, the ignition coil the other end goes into the spark plug i have double up on this is a twin cylinder so we're going to come around here and we have the other cylinder okay this is a twin 25 horsepower overhead valve this is the other coil here and that goes to my spark tester which goes in line with the spark plug all right so i'm going to sit on a tractor and I'm going to start it, and it's going to sound funny to me, it may not sound funny to you, but we're going to show you the one spark tester is going to have a flash, the right side spark tester shouldn't because it has a bad coil, and that's why it feels sluggish. Okay, as you saw, you had a nice bright orange one on the left side here, and there was absolutely nothing on the right side. Now, this is a twin cylinder. It didn't sound horrible, but it, it actually uh, has a dropped coil, dropped cylinder, as I say, but it has a bad ignition coil. So I'm going to take off the, take off the uh, wires here to my ignition testers and get them out of the way here so I can show you how to do this. Now, I'm also going to take off the hood. And you don't have to have an ignition tester, but it really does help. Um, and these aren't too much money. You might be able to get these at a local Napa or uh, Walmart. Anybody will probably sell this. This is just an inline one. I've been using them for years. Uh, the only thing I like about these is they tend to melt if you get them near hot stuff, which is pretty much anything will melt. But they're pretty nice to use. I'm going to put the ignition coil wire back to the spark plug on this side because we know the other side is bad. Now you got to make sure if you have lights, disconnect your headlights for your hood before you take the hood off. And that's just the two wires here. I already have them disconnected. All right, this guy has lights. I'm going to take the hood off. They're usually pretty easy to get off. This one here just lifts off. Put it down out of your way. Now, I'm going to show you what I use for tools. All right, now, technically, you need a quarter inch socket, 5 16 socket, 3 8 socket. The quarter inch socket is not used on this model because I'll tell you when I get to that point why the quarter inch socket is needed for a lot of different models. This one doesn't have it. A couple extensions, a quarter inch ratchet. You can use a 3 8 ratchet, half inch ratchet, whatever works, what you have in your arsenal uh, to use. Uh, wrenches, it would take you a while, but the sockets are an easy way to go. This is the new ignition coil, and this is a this is what I used back in the day. This is actually a microfish, but it's actually a 12 thousandths gap. We need a piece of paper that's between 8 and 12 thousandths. All right, sometimes the box that the coil comes in will be that thickness, and sometimes you can cheat and use that. But you're going to need something that's the equivalent of 8 thousandths or up to 12 thousandths gap. Now, this one here is just two pieces of microfish. Back in the day, we used to use microfish to look up parts. Uh, I just staple them together, and that's what I use for my armature gapper. Um, so anything about that size. Now I use, being that I was born with one hand, I cheat and I use an electric quarter inch drive ratchet and that eliminates this. Eliminates a lot of uh, wrenching with your hand. But anyway, I'm going to use the 516 socket first. I'm going to take the air cleaner off before we do this. And they either have two or four screws on here. I think some of the newer ones actually have um, like latches on some of them but just be careful with these you'll lose them just take these off just set it aside okay have the air filter here it's a cartridge air filter pull that out and a lot of times these things are going to be packed you, you got to be careful we don't get anything in here this is the throat of the carburetor so you got to be careful so take off your air filter you have a pre-filter which in turn, is, it's incorrectly right there. A lot of people put them in upside down by accident, but screen mesh up to the paper, okay? So foam down, all right? And these should be lubed a little bit when you put them back in there, but I'm just, for this purposes, we're just taking it out. Now, the quarter inch socket, a lot of times these covers have a quarter inch 
either in the center or one on this side and one on this side. This particular model does not have the quarter inch um, bolts that you have to take out that will actually screw the plastic. You do have to take off the housing here, 5 16 socket will take these off. I'm going to cheat a little bit by using my electric. Now these are, you got to be careful putting these back in because these are actually screws and they screw into plastic. So you got to make sure when you put them back in that you don't screw them too tight because you can strip them and break them and then you're going to be in trouble. So you put them in until they're snug and you're good. And if you have them all taken out, the whole thing should come up. And just put that aside. All right, so now we got to go to the 3 8 socket. Now I'm going to use a small extension at one point here. So I'll put the extension here, but it's a 3 8 socket on your ratchet, and you're going to loosen, oh, they're all 3 8 screws. Right. Normally you don't have to take all these out, this is why I need the extension, because this one's, this one here, you don't have to take the fuel pump off. Some of these you have to remove the fuel pump or get it out of the way, you know, sometimes you have to drop that off. Now I'm not taking these all the way out because it should just pop off out of here. Some of them had slots in them like this one does. Some of them did not have slots. You just have to see which one it does. All right, so every one of them is off. Go around, double check yourself that they're out. I got one back here. It has to come out. I think I already had that one out. All right. And just be careful. If anything falls, I would definitely do this on inside your garage if you have a garage or somewhere where it's not out in the grass so just in case you take your stuff apart here and it falls it should just come out if you have everything for some reason this guy's getting stuck back here not sure why i'm just going to take this one out the white's getting hung up. Well, I don't want to drop this. Okay, so off we go. So now we're down to the coils. And you have your coil here is your left coil. This is the one that we checked with the spark tester and it was fine. You have your right coil. This is the coil that was bad. So now you got to go back to your 516 socket. And I'm going to use a small extension. Okay. Two bolts. 5 sixteenths heads on them. Lift them up. And I'm going to take them out. Put them in my hand so I don't lose them because they'll drop. I'm going to put them aside. Alright, so now the coil is loose. Now when you take the coil up, you want to turn it upside down if you can. There's going to be a ground wire connected to it. So you're going to have to take this ground wire off the coil. All right, and then your coil will pop out. Granted, this was not connected to the spark plug, but it usually, usually is. So your ground wire is going to go back on right here. It's going to go back on your new coil you're going to put in. So we're going to come over to the bench. Now when they sell you new coils, a lot of times, they do not come with the booty so all you have to do is pull the booty off just be careful but it's rubber I mean some of them are gonna be in better condition than others this one isn't too bad now what I normally do is I'll use simple green you can use any kind of a soapy solution to put it on the new coil it'll help it slide on better I use simple green just like it all right, so now it's slippery, it'll dry, and it'll be fine. All right, now they have, the end of the coil has the metal part, which that connects to your spark plug. So your booty is a 90 degree booty. It's a 90 degree spark plug end. Just slide it on to where it's gonna be facing the right direction, which is out. Slid on real nice and easy because it was just slippery substance there, and that stuff just dries up and goes away. So once your coil is ready to go back on, now remember, the ground wire is gonna go right here, and as we took it off, you're gonna be going back on the same direction, okay? All right, so find this ground wire. 
We connect it. A little tricky here. It should fit right on there. For some reason. I need a little bit more wire. Just have to have a little patience. All right. Now it's on. Make sure it's on there, on there. And make sure all the other wires aren't eaten by mice if you had any mice problems. But these wires all look good. No mice in there. Mice will pack their homes inside here, so you got to be careful about that. Now, make sure that the ground wire is on the bottom. Get your two screws back in the holes. Make sure you don't cross thread these one. And once you get the screws started, what you want to do is I there's a little you, the armature has slight slots in them. Okay, that's how you adjust your armature air gap, and that's why we needed that zero eight to twelve thousand piece of paper. And I'm going to show you how to adjust that. I usually try to put the ignition wire at least back where it sl slides into the slot where it came out of, and you can hook it back up to your spark plug. I would definitely recommend replacing spark plugs if you're going to replace the coil just because I mean you don't have to but it's just kind of like a tune-up thing and this guy's getting a this guy's getting a uh, service anyway all right so once that's connected and this is still loose I'm gonna go over and get my air gap paper I'm gonna put it inside here but first of all what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna tighten these up pull the armature back Easier said than done with one hand, but pull the armature back so as far as the way as you can from the flywheel and tighten down, just snug them down. Now I know there's a lot of different ways you can do this, but what I do is I'll put the paper, put the, this is just my card as you call it. All right, now here's the magnet that goes by the, goes by the coil, which in, energizes it, this magnet here. So I try to put the magnet right in the center, and I'm going to use just the outside edges of that magnet. Put my air gap. This is the 12 thousandths. You can do 8 to 12. I try to do it a little bit wider just in case you have any kind of air when you do it. You're going to loosen up. I just lost my battery. You're going to loosen up those two nuts, bolts, I should say. Loosen them up, and they should... It, it should slide in towards the flywheel, okay? And if you have to, push them in. But the magnet usually sucks them close. So you push them in, tighten it up. Now, I use the ratchet end of it on this side because you have to be careful you don't overdo it. You want them very tight, but not tight enough to strip the aluminum. Make sure they're tight. And then you can either pull it out or turn the flywheel to get them to come out. This one here is, is plasticky, so it's pretty easy to just pull them out. And there's your air gap. So what you do to check your air gap is you rotate the cylinder at least one full rotation and listen for any kind of metal binding. If you have metal binding anywhere, that means that this went in too far, gap didn't work, do it over. That's all you have to do is do it over, do it again until you get it you know, nice smooth. But you got to be between 8 and 12 thousandths on this particular engine. Some of the other ones are all pretty much around the same. But that's pretty much installed. Now we just have to get the cover back on, which can be a little bit tricky because of how the shrouding is. So you place the cover over. Now, like I'm saying about tricky, you have a lot of, a lot of stuff. In fact, it looks like he was missing a bolt here. But you want to get these guys all slide over. And it takes a little bit of playing with sometimes. And you might have to loosen up the screws a little more. And some of them actually have the screws out. You just have to play with it until you get everybody lined up. Sometimes they go on nice and easy and sometimes they don't. And you'll know because you'll see the collars lining up with the, everything. I think we're pretty good. I'm zoom these back on real quick. 
go back to your 3 8 socket on your ratchet. Now for video purposes, I'm not going to button everything back up again because I just want you guys to see. to get to the point where we can actually put the ignition testers back on and if everything went well it should run a little bit smoother and we should see fire on both sides all right so there's one ignition there's spark plug this guy So that's pretty much it. That's how you put an ignition coil on a twin cylinder Briggs and Stratton engine. If you have any questions, you can always email me. Thanks for watching.